these are the far from the only football games the Prime Minister has accepted freebies to see. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're looking at the current Prime Minister's biggest controversies and the reasons why Starmer is becoming increasingly unpopular. But when I grew up, my dad was a toolmaker. He worked in a factory. <laughs> it's true. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Beergate. Ever since the first Covid lockdown, I've always followed the rules. In the midst of Partygate, with Starmer posing himself as a man who loves law and order, it turned out that the Labour camp may have been having parties of its own. Starmer and Deputy Leader Angela Rayner both attended an event in Durham in 2021 and were filmed through the window. The statement came three days after Durham police said they were investigating this event for a potential breach of Covid laws. Police investigated and Starmer maintained that, unlike Partygate, it really was a work event and pledged to resign if he was found to have broken the rules. Take out curry and beer a year ago with fellow Labour campaigners. Ultimately, police cleared Labour's top brass and they continued arguing that Boris Johnson should resign. But this was an early indication of Starmer's potential hypocrisy in public office. This is a matter of principle and honour for me. It's about who I am, what I stand for. And I stand for honour and integrity. Long term sick. It's no secret that increasing numbers of Brits are economically inactive and on long term sick leave. The Tories before them, and now Labour, have tackled this crisis not by looking at the reasons people have to take so much time off, but by saying they're going to crack down on benefits claimants and force the sick back into full-time work. Agree or disagree with the strategy all you like, but what does it say about Starmer's Labour that, only a few months after getting into power, the government starts parroting the same complaints and strategies for dealing with them as the deeply unpopular Conservatives. Perhaps Labour should focus its efforts on fixing the NHS instead. Climate pledges. Despite a massive lead in the polls, in 2024, Starmer dropped the £28 billion green investment plan from the party's manifesto. We won't reach the £28 billion envisaged um, and that, effect, that figure has effectively uh, stood down. This was all part of reaching net zero by 2030, but ditching the policy was mind-boggling. Climate activists may be controversial, but green energy plans like wind farms and electric cars remain hugely popular, not to mention there was absolutely no public pressure on Labour to get rid of these pledges. Labour's green plan commitment had already shrunk from £28 billion every year of a parliament to £28 billion by the end of a parliament. It was claimed that the pledge was watered down because the party projected that, if it won the next election, which it did, the country wouldn't have been able to afford it. But it left people wondering what, exactly, Starmer's Labour stood for. But now, Labour's much reduced green policies sit alongside the flat government investment plans, which Labour's signed up to. Gaza. The Labour Party seems to be really horribly divided on the middle doesn't it? What are you going to do about that? During the 2024 election cycle, Starmer managed to spectacularly alienate Britain's millions of Muslim voters, who traditionally vote for Labour, with his stance on Gaza. Every day we can see the awful suffering going on in Israel and in Gaza. He spent months following the beginning of the conflict in October 2023, refusing to endorse a ceasefire instead suggesting that there should be a humanitarian pause. In September 2024, new Foreign Secretary David Lammy finally said that he was going to limit arms sales to Israel, but not completely, and only for weapons going to Gaza. I think that the quickest way, the most practical and effective way to get that changed is to have a humanitarian pause. For people who want the conflict to end, this is still seen as Britain not going far enough. Eventually, Starmer did take a hardline stance, though, demanding a ceasefire and the release of all the sausages. Sorry, hostages. I call again for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The return of the sausages. The hostages. Austerity. But the Tories say you will go further. They're right, aren't they? You will. Well, the first thing I'd say is the Tories are in no position to lecture anyone about tax rises. Upon winning July's election, Starmer was quick to announce that the road ahead was going to be bad for the country and that it might take more than the first five years of a Labour administration to fix everything wrong with Blighty. 
that seems to indicate a return to the austerity policies of David Cameron and George Osborne, though without calling it austerity. No, no tax rises in the next parliament. No tax rises needed in the plans in our manifesto. In the plans. No, no tax rises for working people. Journalists were quick to pick up on this, though Starmer has said publicly that Labour isn't going back to the austerity of the 2010s. Regardless, the government has given the public many dire warnings that the autumn budget is going to be full of difficult choices. Will it be more cuts to public services or tax rises on Britain's worst off? Uh, because when a, pl a politician says uh, no plans, it does mean I might. Well, Beth, I'm not... I've got well, this a bit. It does. Winter fuel payment. The first big rebellion under Starmer came early on when Labour announced that it was going to get rid of winter fuel payments, punishing the country's most vulnerable people as energy prices are still higher than they should be. I do not understand how our new Labour government can cut the winter fuel allowance for pensioners and leave the super rich untouched! Winter fuel payments do still exist, but they'll only be available to certain pensioners who are already claiming other means-tested benefits. There was uproar about this both in Parliament and in public, including a non-binding vote being tabled to reverse the cut during 2024's party conference. This is not what people voted for. It's the wrong decision and it needs to be reversed. He's also enraged the trade unions by doing this, and considering unions are Labour's biggest donors, that's not good. The unions have been very angry about this decision to means test winter fuel payments and basically remove them from millions of pensioners this winter, which they... Jimmy Savile. I went to run the Crown Prosecution Service. You ref referenced that. I was the chief prosecutor for five years. This doesn't concern Starmer's time in politics, but his tenure working for the CPS. No small number of people in the UK hold Starmer personally responsible for Jimmy Savile not being brought to justice during his lifetime. This doesn't really hold water and speaks to a misunderstanding of how the Crown Prosecution Service works. But you know what people say? Mud sticks. This leader of the opposition, a former director of public prosecutions, Mr Speaker, will say he said he spent most of his time prosecuting journalists and failing to prosecute Jimmy Savile, as far as I can make out, Mr Speaker. Notably, these claims were given more attention by Boris Johnson trying to smear Starmer during PMQs when he was in opposition. But what's the truth? While Starmer was head of the CPS in 2009, and the CPS did take the decision not to charge Savile because of insufficient evidence, and because the victims were too scared to testify, but Starmer wasn't personally involved. It is a ridiculous slur peddled by right-wing trolls. Labour purges. The Labour government is a movement by the people for the people, unless you're too left-wing, that is. Despite running for party leader on the platform that he'd take Corbyn's most popular policies and give them a fresh and more respectable coat of paint, as soon as Starmer won, he began purging left-wing party members. I think there is a purge. I think they don't want critical voices, and I think that's a real shame. I think the Labour Party has to be a broad church. This didn't just include MPs who were saying contentious things on Twitter, though. Ordinary people who paid to be party members and have the ability to vote in membership elections also found themselves ejected, despite wielding no political power and not being public figures. Starmer also managed to all but destroy the party campaign group Momentum for being Corbynites. It looks like a purge and it feels like a purge, so it's a purge, and it's a purge that I think, if there is any good in it, it is that it's it telling the British people things they need to know about Keir Starmer. Jeremy Corbyn. You said, I do think Jeremy Corbyn would make a great Prime Minister. Jeremy Corbyn, did you mean that? I was certain that we would lose the 2019 election. Still on the topic of Labour purges, there was one key victim of them, former party leader Jeremy Corbyn. Corbyn was massively popular with Labour's paid-up membership. After all, they did vote for him, but less popular with some of Labour's more influential factions. Corbyn was suspended by the party amid the anti-Semitism scandal, as the subsequent leadership decided that he hadn't done enough to stop it. I've been in the Labour Party all my life, and I want to make it absolutely clear, anti-Semitism has no place whatsoever in our party or our movement. But in 2024, there were even more purges of prominent Labour politicians. 
There was a big controversy around Diane Abbott being temporarily banned from standing as a Labour candidate, and then the party refusing to endorse Pfizer Shaheen as a candidate for criticising Israel, which led to Tory Ian Duncan Smith keeping the seat Shaheen was contesting. Just be honest. I honestly didn't think that we had a chance of winning that so election. So you said it anyway. Freebie gate. But instead now he's in office while well, he's spending his time having to deal with questions over how many Arsenal matches he's been gifted and who's paid for his wife's clothes. In September, it turned out that Starmer's wife Victoria was wearing an awful lot of designer clothes. This triggered a chain reaction of revelations that the Starmers and many other senior Labour politicians, Rayner and Bridget Phillipson among them, were accepting lavish gifts from extremely rich donors, including the founder of ASOS. Now he must declare everything he receives, and he's received a lot. Labour had been adamant that accepting gifts like designer brands and Taylor Swift tickets is totally above board because all the gifts were declared to Parliament, but the public hasn't seen it that way. Wahid Ali, the media and retail entrepreneur, also a Labour peer, who gave clothing and glasses and unspecified accommodation. While the government is asking us all to tighten our belts, they're down in Whitehall going to see Premier League matches and Taylor Swift for free in a work context. In fact, even more than that, that's the total gifts and hospitality he has registered since the start of the last parliament. Let us know what you think of Starmer's tenure as Prime Minister so far. Any gift or donation to a politician has to be declared. Um, everything I've had has been declared. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.